Okay, welcome to the next video. I am going to be working on this today. This is the base stand for the Hasbro pack, as you know, and I'm going to be painting up a little bit like I did with the fire extinguisher. So the process is going to be the same. You have to think about what the layers are going to be doing, where the chips are. Now, if you're like me and you actually did this wrong, because I did, uh, this back plate is the wrong way round but actually I think I prefer that I prefer it because when the uh, when the pack is on the stand when you look around the pack you've got that paint on the back if it was the other way round you'll see I've masked the front I would have been masking the back so and on that note masking on these things is paramount make sure that you spend a lot of time masking this up properly I don't want any of this area to have any paint and the reason why is because that's where your pack is going to be uh, sat on on there and what I don't want to do is a transfer of paint or rubbing of paint onto the pack that kind of stuff so all of the areas that are touching the pack here all masked off remember that and then our base color is going to be a gray primer again it's is exactly the same I've got the paints from the uh, stuff I did or I got from Amazon which is uh, the car paints a little set uh, which didn't cost the earth, which is really good. So I've got the silver again, that'll be the second layer. Third layer will be the black. And then the last layer will be the yellow stripes, which is what I'm going to do. If you saw my other video, or if you haven't seen my other video, go and watch it. Uh, same process, just take your time. Uh, just need to make sure that the masking is all good, and I'm going to get this sprayed up. Let's do it. time with this okay i didn't have a mask and i'm right next to the door i'm well ventilated so take your time when you're doing this part it'll pay dividends later you're probably gonna have to do a second coat so do it really lightly do what i did just spray 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 a little bit further away than you probably would have done if you read the can you're gonna want to be a little bit closer and have you know proper uh <coughs> sprays quite close but i do it slightly further away so it, it kind of goes on a little bit thinner and just I dab, 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 dab. Just take the time with this one because what you don't want is the base coat to have loads of runs, loads of drips that you have to remove later, sand down, all that kind of stuff. So that's got a good coverage on it. I can see areas that aren't covered that well, but that's okay. It's going to get a second coat. Leave that now for a good couple of hours. I'm going out in a bit anyway. Going to come back later, do another little coat where, I'm, where I think I need it because this thing has got all kinds of crevices in. <clears throat> that I want to paint as well so all the bits inside here you have to try and get to with the with the spray paint it's a little bit difficult up underneath the ridges here I haven't done too well underneath there that's fine I'll get that later I've covered right underneath there because what I don't want is for the paint to hit anywhere that's going to go onto the the bottom of the the front plate if that makes sense so make sure your masking is really good really important right let me go get a shell see you later how good does that look so I've done the metallic layer I did it late last night so I didn't get a chance to record it but what I have also done this morning is actually add you probably don't know if you can see it is add a little bit of rub and buff to the areas that are welded or look like the welds like like you know those fake weld bits and the reasons why I've done that is because when I add the paint over the top I want these bits to show through but weld marks always look a little bit different than the surrounding metal if that makes sense so i wanted it just to have a little bit of highlight almost in it which kind of to me makes sense to do that before i add the black layer but that's looking really good so what i need to do now is mask up the no ghost because i want to paint that differently 
I'm going to put some mask around that and then it will need a coat of black. We're getting there, but before we put the black on, remember, we need to do the toothpaste. So the areas like the edges that I want chipped and up here and all these, all these kind of bits here and around the back, all on these bits here. These will all, all get a little bit of toothpaste before I do the black. And then later today, because I've got an event today, later today when I get back later, I will rub off the toothpaste and we'll have chips in the black paint where the silver will shine through before we then mask up for the yellow. Take it one step at a time, take it really, really slow. Uh, if you're doing this and copying me, honestly, the slower you do this, the better it's gonna be, and the better it's gonna turn out. Uh, remember, all the masking areas, like I'm gonna mask the no-ghost in a minute, do it properly, take your time, because that will pay dividends at the end. Okay, so let's mask this up and uh, see how we do. Okay, I'm happy with that. Uh, lesson here, use a really sharp knife. Uh, this blade isn't as sharp as I thought it was, and it has kind of done a few weird and wonderful things, but it doesn't matter because I can always touch it up with some paint pens later. Uh, but I think that's masked really well, and that will do me favors later when I come to paint it. Okay, now is the time to get some toothpaste on this baby. Okay, so as you can see, I took my time. Little bits of toothpaste everywhere. Uh, take the time, you want it to be as random as possible. You don't want it to, to all look good. But everywhere that's got a bit sticking out and most of the edges are where the chips are gonna happen, occur, right? So that's what I've done. Uh, try to be random as much as I can do. The next step is to apply the black paint. Now I've got some matte, black which I'm going to use which is plastic coat which is really good I uh, love plastic coat you'll know if you watch any of my other videos uh, I'm going to give that a light spray and then give it another spray before I go out later so it's going to get two coats really light spray first because what I don't want is any drips and then once it's dry after a few hours I'm going to go in with a wet cloth or a wet bit of uh, kitchen tissue just wipe off those areas that have the toothpaste and that's going to create chips hopefully in the in the black paint which is going to show through the silver paint that's kind of the idea let's hope that works fingers crossed i'm going to go and take this back down the garden give it a spray with black and then uh wait till later hopefully it's gonna look good let's do this <laughs> Proper good. The next step is to tape up, mask up for the yellow paint. It's going to take a bit of time, so this is the bit you need to do properly. Let's do that. <laughs> Time. It doesn't have to be perfect because when you spray it up 
and we're about to put some more uh, toothpaste on these areas here. Doesn't have to be massively perfect and it's not an easy uh, shape to actually mask up anyway because it's a bit it's a bit loose in place, but that's fine. Won't matter too much. I'm gonna put some toothpaste on some of these areas anyway. Uh, so let's get into getting some toothpaste on there, then we can get it started to get sprayed up the yellow. Let's do this. <laughs> Okay, so we are all masked up and we've got toothpaste sorted out for the chips and cracks and stuff. Uh, I now have my yellow paint. This is, uh, again, my plastic coat, really good stuff. Uh, this time I am gonna wear a mask uh, because this stuff is uh, pretty thick. <sighs> Let's do this, this should be good. <laughs> got drips and everything do you know what I like it I don't even care if it drips down behind the the tape this is all gonna be really rough and look amazing once it's weathered as well don't forget we've got the weathering to go on this yet so this is not over by any stretch look how yellow that is in the sunlight awesome next step leave it probably overnight let it dry properly see if it needs a touch up in the morning and then we'll get on to taking all that tape off that's gonna be amazing. Let's do this. The tape bit is brilliant. That looks good. <gasps> now time for my favorite part, that's to take the toothpaste off. Let's get those chips going. good does that look that looks incredible now comes the satisfying part of taking off the tape remember leave the tape on you had on originally because you're going to be doing some weathering to this and i don't want to affect those parts so just the tape we put on for the yellow stripes <gasps> love this bit let's do it <laughs> I am so happy with that. The only thing that I've left uh, covered for now is the no ghost because that's going to get a whole complete different paint job and I'll weather that separately as well. But the next step, I actually like it as it is, funny enough. My wife just said, why don't you leave it? I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. But look how, how good the chips look. Looks really, really effective. Love it. So yeah, next step is weathering. So it's going to get some scratches from some rub and buffing areas. Uh, and then it's going to get a, I don't know whether I'm going to use the chalkboard paint to give it a, a black wash or use the brown paint I used on my pack to give it some brown areas here and there. I don't know, maybe I'll use both, I don't know yet. But this already looks insane. Really happy with how it looks. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments so far. Let's get on with the weathering. Just a little bit of uh, rub and buff, just to give a few scratches. Remember, the rub and buff scratches is different to the chips. The chip effect I've never used before. I used to kind of do that with the rub and buff, so you don't need a lot of this uh, to, to give it that kind of scratchy effect because you've already got a lot of chips in there. Don't overdo this, is what I'm trying to say, uh, because you can just completely ruin the effect. Uh, you don't want to take away from the chips, right? Okay, next is some. Um, Dirtying this up. So this is going to get a wash of either black chalkboard paint Which I used on uh, my bottle For my fire extinguisher, which is there Which in this case, I don't know if I'm going to want to use that. I want to, I want to add a little bit of brown. So I might do the 
Hi, say hi. I might do the brown plastic coat again that I did with the weathering on my pack, which is a really nice effect, but not go as far this time. Just do it in a few areas because I do like the effect it has as it is. Then once all that's done, we are gonna finish it off with some, uh, what have we got here? Clear lacquer. So it's gonna be finished off some clear lacquer. It'd be, it'd be cold, because don't forget the rubber buff, although it is oil based, it will still, to touch, it will still smudge. So you, you really, and the black paint as well, potentially, because uh, you really want to get that covered over and properly done, properly and covered. I wouldn't say covered again. So yeah, so we're going to get on to some more weathering right now. And then once that's done and we can get it finished off, we can get all the tape off and have a look at the finished article. I've got mess everywhere, look. Right, let's do this. <laughs> Okay, I'm really happy with that. I don't think I'm gonna do the brown. I did the chalkboard paint. And the, the idea of this is do it in slightly layers. So do it really wet first. So do, it, do a coat of really wet stuff so you can wipe it off. So it just takes a lot of the yellow dullness down. So don't forget, this isn't really gonna work on the black. It's mainly on the yellow. And then we have a thicker bit of paint. Paint in areas you think would be a bit dirtier. So round like here, round the, round the, uh, the uh, what you call the bolts and stuff. And the other thing I wanted to do as well is, if I can turn it around, hang on a second, it's a bit weird. Around the outside of the no ghost, when I paint that, it's going to be almost have a good like uh, effect of being really weathered around the outside of the no ghost, which is what I want. And, I, and I'll weather the no ghost separately as well, so that's going to get a, a lick of paint uh, much later, so after I finish this. This now needs to just be sealed, and that's it. I'm going to seal this up. I'm not going to do the brown... Uh, the brown plastic coat. Uh, I think it'd be overkill for this. I just want to keep it nice and simple. Uh, it looks good. I like the areas where I've done with the like the, the the fake weld areas. I've had a little bit of the the gold rub and buff into it as well, so it gives it a slightly different look. And once sealed, that is going to look incredible. So all I've got to do now is seal it up. So I'm going to take down the garden, give it a quick seal, and then wait for that to dry. And then that's it. Uh, you'll see the final product in a second. So I just want to thank you for, I know this has been a really long video, but I wanted to give you a step-by-step -step kind of guide on how I did this. Because it is tricky, and I know there are people out there that want to do something like this, and there's no real instructions out there of how to do it, and using the toothpaste effect, it's really effective. It looks really good. Look how good it looks on the chips, on the yellow. So you can see the black come through, and then underneath the black, you've got the silver come through. And that's the kind of effect you're looking for, where, where it's been knocked around, and it's all really chipped. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, please whack a thumbs up. And once uh, once this is th finished, I may put out there to see if anyone wants me to weather up their stand. So if you've got a stand that's currently sat doing nothing, it's just plastic, and you want something like this, obviously I'm going to do different colours. There'll be a um, there will be a cost involved in that. But if I work out how many hours I've worked on this, it works out about three, maybe three and a half hours. Of effectively doing stuff. The main stuff is the the bulk of the the time is is getting the masking right. So you're going to mask properly. The painting takes literally seconds to paint it up, and it's just waiting. But while I'm waiting, I could be doing you know other stuff. So actually physically working on this, I reckon I've done about three and a half hours, give or take. So I'll price it up for something like that. So if you're interested in having something like this, uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments. I'll send you a a link to my messenger or whatever, and we'll come up with some kind of price. Uh, you send me your current black, nothing on it, uh, stand, and I'll weather it for you. Uh, so here is the final product. Obviously, it's not ready yet, but you can see it now. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Whack a thumbs up if you can, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. So in future videos, uh, you get notified when I upload stuff. Cheers, guys. Take it easy. Bye. <laughs>